Section 3 of Woman in the Nineteenth Century. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clutt. Woman in the Nineteenth Century and Kindred Papers Relating to the Sphere, Condition, and Duties of Women by Margaret Fuller. Woman in the Nineteenth Century, Part One Preface to Woman in the Nineteenth Century. The following essay is a reproduction, modified and expanded, of an article published in The Dial, Boston, July 1843, under the title of The Great Lawsuit Man vs. Men, Woman vs. Women. This article excited a good deal of sympathy and still more interest. It is in compliance with wishes expressed from many quarters that it is prepared for publication in its present form. Objections having been made to the former title as not sufficiently easy to be understood, the present has been substituted as expressive of the main purpose of the essay, though by myself the other is preferred, partly for the reason others do not like it. That is, that it requires some thought to see what it means, and might thus prepare the reader to meet me on my own ground. Besides, it offers a larger scope, and is, in that way, more just to my desire. I meant by that title to intimate the fact that, while it is the destiny of man in the course of the ages to ascertain and fulfill the law of his being, so that his life shall be seen as a whole to be that of an angel or messenger, the action of prejudices and passions which attend in the day the growth of the individual is continually obstructing the holy work that is to make the earth a part of heaven. By man I mean both man and woman. These are the two halves of one thought. I lay no especial stress on the welfare of either. I believe that the development of the one cannot be effected without that of the other. My highest wish is that this truth should be distinctly and rationally apprehended, and the conditions of life and freedom recognized as the same for the daughters and the sons of time, twin exponents of a divine thought. I solicit a sincere and patient attention from those who open the following pages at all. I solicit of women that they will lay it to heart to ascertain what is for them the liberty of law. It is for this, and not for any the largest extension of partial privileges that I seek. I ask them, if interested by these suggestions, to search their own experience and intuitions for better, and fill up with fit materials the trenches that hedge them in. From men I ask a noble and earnest attention to anything that can be offered on this great and still obscure subject, such as I have met from many with whom I stand in private relations. And may truth, unpolluted by prejudice, vanity, or selfishness, be granted daily more and more as the due of inheritance, and only valuable conquest for us all. November 1844 Woman in the Nineteenth Century Frailty, thy name is woman. The earth waits for her queen. The connection between these quotations may not be obvious, but it is strict. Yet would any contradict us if we made them applicable to the other side, and began also, Frailty, thy name is man. The earth waits for its king. Yet man, if not yet fully installed in his powers, has given much earnest of his claims. Frail he is indeed. How frail, how impure!